Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In today's video we're going to look at five reasons that your renders suck and talk about how to fix them. Before I get started a huge thank you to all of my patrons and members. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. If you are interested in supporting the video feel free to visit the Patreon in the description down below or you can join the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. Before I go any further, I'd like to just quickly drop in a little disclaimer here. I am in no way attacking anybody or anyone, any company, anything like that with these. These are just the most common things that I notice based on the comments that I see and emails that I receive from people. I'm not singling anybody out here. I'm using these um, as a way of teaching. So the First reason that your renders suck, and this is probably one that we've all been there. You're sick of waiting for four hours for a single render to finish. You've got a list of renders that you want to try and complete by the end of the day or by the end of the week in order to keep up with your arbitrarily defined deadlines. And you start stopping your renders too early, which results in them being, frankly, just a grainy mess um we've all seen them you've all played visual novels or games and seen renders where it looks like there's a lot of gauzy and noise added to the image no that's just because whoever rendered it couldn't be bothered to wait the full distance and stop their renders too early the frustrating thing about this is that it's often not consistent either you'll find that one or two images are very clear where they've either started the render overnight and left it to run for eight or nine hours or they've gone out or something like that. Um, and then you'll, it, it's quite jarring because it then jumps back to grainy crappy images and it just ruins the immersion. Next one is over optimizing your scenes. So number two is over optimizing your scenes and it's often done in an attempt to speed up the renders. People will remove too much from the scene. So you'll just end up with like a character, a couch in a room with no other objects around them. So it looks like they've just moved in and they've only been able to afford the cheap nasty sofa or something like that. Um, Again, most of the time this is just going to leave your renders looking boring and unrealistic. It is going to speed up your renders slightly and in some cases by quite a bit. But what's the point in having a fast render if it just looks unrealistic? There aren't many people who will sit on a couch in an empty room. Um, very, very few living rooms have nothing else in them, even in today's minimalist society. So over optimizing the scenes is number two. Number three, and this is one that I'm quite passionate about and everyone's heard me bleat on about it over and over again, but I'm not going to sharp about it. So get used to the idea that I think that post noiser is garbage. Don't use it. The Dash Studio One is absolutely terrible. It makes all of your images look flat, removes all texture from surfaces of the people and objects in your scene. And what few details do slip through the net, they end up looking distorted and just weird. Um, there is the all singing, all dancing that nobody will leave me alone about denoiser, the AI denoiser that Nvidia have, but even that leaves weird artifacts in the images. Um, the short of the long of it is don't use denoiser. Render your images properly. It's a surefire path to better looking renders. Yeah, you might save a few minutes here and there by using the denoiser, but your images are going to look like crap. Just don't use it. There's no need to. Dash Studio does what it does very well. Um, you just need to be patient. Uh, number four, and this is another one that I'm very passionate about being a photographer, and that is poor lighting. People trying to speed up their renders by having less light sources in the scene, and that just results in the images looking flat, boring, and lifeless. Lighting is probably the most important thing in a scene, probably more so than even the characters that you have in the scene, simply because without good lighting, they just look terrible. I've dedicated so many videos to getting good lighting setups in there, and that's for a very good reason, and that is to help you create more realistic, more pleasant looking, more three-dimensional looking images that have depth and life in them. Number five, this is probably my biggest pet peeve, and it is lack of post-production. 
all AAA games, TV shows, movies, magazines, marketing, posters, successful digital artists. They all use post-production and everything. It's not something optional that they throw in if they have time. It's something that they factor into their budget, something that is a constant. You know, if you look at images of um, behind the scenes movies, um, you know, the Marvel movies are a very sort of good example of this. You see the behind the scenes photos and everything just looks like garbage. And post production is what sells the image, it's what makes the image look realistic, it's what cleans up all of the details and gives it that final polish. Refusing to do post-production because of some retarded purist notion that you shouldn't need to it just makes your images look amateurish and uninteresting. So those are the sort of the top five reasons why I see most people's renders are bad. Um, so the rendering images is not a quick process by any stretch of the imagination. If you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a top-end graphics PC or hiring a render farm, you are going to have to get used to the idea that you aren't going to be able to throw out dozens of scenes each month on your own. You need to leave your renders until they're finished to create a professional looking project and that takes time. You might be able to shave off a few minutes here and there, but it is vitally important that you stop obsessing over speeding your renders up at the cost of quality. Daz is very good at what it does but it is a free piece of software and it does have limitations. I'm going to labour the point here because I really feel like the point is lost on some people. Image quality in visual novels is equally if not more important than the story itself. Badly rendered images will distract the end user from the story and in some cases put them off altogether. I've lost count of the number of VNs that I've lost interest in within the first few images just because of how poorly done it is. The, the look of a VN, just if it looks like garbage, I assume that the storyline is going to be garbage too because whoever did it obviously rushed and that just causes me to lose interest very quickly. Leave your renders until they're properly completed. That doesn't mean whacking the quality up to 100% and leaving it until it finishes because it may never do. Some renders will never reach 100%, but certainly leave them for long enough and look Use your preview to see if the image that's finished is noisy and if it isn't then you can finish it. If it's still noisy though, if there's still things that aren't fully converged then you know leave it running. Let it do what it's got to do. Don't use the post in noise either, that is just a surefire way to cheap and nasty looking images. You might shave a few minutes off your render times but your renders are going to look absolutely crap. Um, just don't do it, it's not worth it. Once you've got to the stage where you need to use post production, do it. Don't not do it because you think, oh, well, that's fine, that's good enough, or no, I shouldn't need to do it. Das Studio will never produce a perfect render. You need to use Photoshop or GIMP or whatever your image editing software is of choice. Use it to clean up those details, to remove those artifacts, to, if you need to adjust the contrast or add shadows, then use your post-production tools to do it. Make your images look professional. Give it that little bit of extra work. Finish the job and use post-production. And equally, while you're making your scenes, make sure that you're using good lighting. Don't cheapen out on your images by, you know, only having one light where you might need three. Use the techniques that I've shown you in my other videos. Create HDRI images, all that kind of stuff. Just make your images look nice and solid before you hit the render button. And then leave that render to run until the image is complete. It make a whole lot of difference. And yes, it is going to be time costing. But the resulting images and the resulting quality of your product is going to be so much better for it and you will end up getting more customers or more players or more users or more viewers or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And until I see you next time, take care guys. Bye bye.